Hello, this is going to be a short video on using Wireshark to perform some file carving. What the process is going to be is using this topology here. We're going to have a Windows 7 station that's going to be running an IIS server with that IP address hosting a simple web page that has an image embedded into it. There's going to be a Windows 7 client running Windows 7 with this IP address running a web client that's going to access that web server and download the page with the image. And then I'm going to use Wireshark to capture the packet transfer and then we're going to carve this specific file, image file, out of the packet capture files. So now I'm going to look at my client machine. I'm going to use Internet Explorer to access the web page off of the web server. Now before I begin the website, I want to go ahead and open up Wireshark. I'm going to start the packet capture. That is now started. I can now open up Internet Explorer. I do not want the basic page. I'm going to open up 10.1, which is my web server, and that opens up. There's my title, bubbling my web page, and there is the picture of the penguins, one of the default images that comes with Microsoft. Now that that's open, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this, bring it back to my Wireshark, and I'm going to stop the packet capture. And you'll see I picked up a lot of files, or I'm sorry, a lot of packets in that file transfer. Okay, so you can see I picked up uh, 1,308 packets over a period of about 41 seconds. A little bit of pause between 27 and 41. Nothing really happened. But if I want to go ahead and go to statistics and then summary, you'll see that I picked up 1,308 packets. That's all of the 100%, and the average time is about 31.85 seconds. I'm sorry, packets per second. All right, what are we looking at here? Well. Obviously, we've used Wireshark before. There's a lot of things here. I can go ahead and look at it in different manners, number, time, source, IPs, destination. Click on protocol. I can go ahead and I can see here is the starting of the HTTP. Knowing that I used that for my tr uh, transfer, that's what I want to focus on. And you'll see here's the get for the basic page. This text, the HM HTML page coming across. And there's one that references the penguins. Now, if I were to go ahead and take a look at my IIS server, I can look at the file itself in the INET pub directory, the www root, and there is the default page. Go ahead and open that up, and I want to open that with Notepad. And you can see here's my code, just the basic HTML, tags for title, my web page. Here is welcome to my web page that was displayed, and then there's the image source referencing the images, and then the penguins.png file. Okay, so there's a few things I can do, a few ways I can uh, go ahead and carve this, this particular file. What I want to do now is I want to go ahead and go to the file menu, and I'm going to go to export objects in HTTP. What this is going to do is going to go through, it's going to look at all files that were transferred via the hypertext transfer protocol. It's going to show me them, and I can select any one that I want. So the first one is the backslash root. This is the default page it came across. Penguins is the actual picture that we've referenced here. And then here's the favorite icon. Now if I go ahead and just highlight the penguins.png, this is the file I'm going to go ahead and save. So when I click on Save As, it's in my Documents folder. I'm just going to call it Penguins. Click on Save, and that is now saved. I'm going to cancel that. In my window up, here's my Penguins. And you can see down here in the bottom left, that is the picture. I double click on it. I'm going to open up the Windows file viewer, picture viewer, and there's my penguins. Okay, so that is the first way of doing it. If it's a supported protocol within Wireshark, you know, the export objects, HTTP is only one of the ones listed, and that's the easy way to do it. Now, let's look at another way that you could do the exact same thing, but you don't have to worry about using the export objects. You have to another use another method that's going to involve the magic numbers of files. So now I'm going to go back to my HTTP protocol. Here's my get. Here's the one that says get images. Right click on that, choose follow TCP stream, and then now you're going to see the listing of data transfer. Again, you see the red and you see blue. Now, if you look at the red, this is going to be from the source machine. 
it's a get request so my client is requesting this information the blue is going to be the responding or the destination machine so it's going to respond with the HTML it's going to respond with that information so now you'll see down here that the blue let's go back up here's the PNG file all this blue text information shouldn't say text is going to be the data that's coming across it's going to be the actual PNG file itself so now down here in the bottom entire conversation where I can look at the data transfer coming from the source machine 10.1 port 80 the web server going to the 10.10 .10 machine random port 1050 which is the client I want to view that only now I have a couple different options here I've asked the EBC DIC the hex dump C arrays or raw I'm going to select raw because I want the raw data itself so I want the data coming from the web server which should be the picture being sent to the web client and again that's raw data so I'm going to go ahead and save as. I'm going to call this picture hyphen raw because it's going to be my raw data. I'm going to save that. Now that's been done. So now I can go ahead and close this window. And now I'm going to look at the raw data, but I'm going to use a hex editor to do so. So the one I've downloaded and used here is HXD. It's a very, very good and free hex editor. It's a couple years old, older edition, but it works absolutely perfect here with my Windows 7 machine. So I'm going to go to File, I'm going to go to Open, and I'm going to find that raw data. There's a picture of that raw, raw hyphen raw. Open up. Now here is the raw data from that transfer. Now you see there's three columns. There's going to be the offset, the hex values in the memory. And there's, here's going to be the data. And the last piece or column to the right is going to be the any readable text. And you'll see here's some HTTP, there's the content type, and so on and so forth. But what I need to do now is look for the magic numbers. When it comes to magic numbers, you're going to be able to find and identify individual files based on those values. And a great source of magic numbers is a web page by a gentleman by the name of Gary Kessler. Here's his page, GaryKessler.net. If you do a quick Google search for Gary Kessler and file signatures, this page will pop right up. Last updated July 5th, 2015. Pretty recent. Now, if I scroll down here, here are all of the magic numbers I'm looking for. And now I know my file is a PNG because that's what's in the get request in the data transfer. So I'm going to do a search for going to find. And I want PNG. And there's PNG right there for the portable network graphic. Here's the magic number in hex. Should be 8954E. 470D0A1A0A. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for just the first three sets of hex values in my hex dump, my raw data, 8954E. So I come back to my hex editor. So I'm going to come up to search. I'm going to find, I'm going to put in my magic number, 89. 54E, and I'm going to go for X values. Got OK, and there it is 8954E. I see the 470D0A1A. I can bring this back up, and there's the 470D0A1A0A. So now I know I have my right file or my right information, magic number. What I need is everything starting with a magic number and including the magic number to look at the actual file. Everything before that is data transfer information. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this stuff out. So I'm going to hit the delete key. It tells me the operation is going to change the file, file size, but this is more specifically the file itself. I'm going to say, okay, this is exactly what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now that should have now saved just the information with the PNG file. So I'm going to close my hex editor, come back to my Windows Explorer. And I can go ahead and open this. It's probably going to ask me what I want to open it with because there's no file extension. I'm going to show you the photo viewer. And there is my picture of my penguins. So by using the magic number, starting with the magic number, and the only magic number including the data transferred after that, I still see my actual picture. Again, everything before that was just file transfer information. So that is the process of using Wireshark to carve a file if the transfer or the protocol such as HTTP that was supported but if it's not supported you can easily find the data transfer 
follow the TCP stream and find the magic number for the specific file type if you know the file type and then you can pull the other data out and again find the file. So to review what I've looked at, what I've done here, I have started with this topology. It's a basic local network. One IIS server running and then one client that's going to be accessing it. Transfer the basic file from the web server to the web client using HTTP and then I used Wireshark to capture the packets. By doing so, I picked up let me minimize this. I picked up all my data packets and we looked at how you could look at the total number of packets that were all listed here. Put it in numerical order. Sorry about that. Scroll down, you can see there's over 1,300. We could look at all the basic statistics for that specific uh, file that I captured. We looked at the protocols and if I went to file export objects, HTTP. I could find the specific file that I wanted to pull out. And then we also looked at how you can find the get transfer. We could do a follow TCP stream. And by doing this, we could isolate more so just the conversation of the data transfer itself. We could save that out and carve that as well. So two different ways to use Wireshark to carve a file. Thank you.